بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Honorable العلماء Beloved brothers and dear listeners Tonight we have completed the 15th para of the Quran In essence we have completed half of the Quran Al-Kareem May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us It should come as a shock to us that half of Ramadan is almost over In essence half of the Quran is over The 14th Taraweeh is over May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true benefit from this month of Ramadan We do not want to meet the end of Ramadan with or having regrets within ourselves that we did not utilize this month properly. And who knows, as I always say, and as we should always bear in mind, maybe we might not even see the last days of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us long and healthy lives. Everyone wants long and healthy lives. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this juz mentions that the Quran indeed guides to the straight path. It guides to that which is correct, that which is straightforward. And in the Quran, there is good news for the believers. <laughs> It gives good news to the believers who do good deeds. الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا that indeed for them is a great reward may Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us this great reward then Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions regarding the affluent Allah says whenever we intend to destroy a nation we command the affluent and the affluent then spread mischief and the punishment is then confirmed. In the sense that they then deserve the punishment, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys them after they deserve the punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst those whom when we have money, we tend to overlook the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we tend to oppress the other worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah is to give us wealth, we must always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, give us pure wealth that will not bring us arrogance. If it is to bring arrogance in our lives, we don't want that wealth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us, وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ بَعْدِ نُوحِ How many generations have we destroyed after Nuh alayhi salam? It's amazing. Look at all those people. Where are they? They are somewhere on this earth. They are buried on this earth. But do we hear them? Do we smell them? Do we see them? No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us that they were much more powerful than you are. Don't think that I cannot punish you. An amazing point is that if we take a look at the lives of the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam and their nations, each nation was involved in one evil. Look at Lut alayhi salam, we spoke about him yesterday. His people were involved in homosexuality. That was the major evil they were involved in. Shu'aib alayhi salam, the major evil his people were involved in was that they used to deceive people in business. They used to cheat in business and each in a similar manner, each nation was involved in one major issue. Today, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the people around us that are living at this time, every single ill that we can think of is in this Ummah. And the, not only the members of the Ummah, but even the Kuffar who are living at this time are engaged in ills and evils of every single nation that has gone past. It has all come in one nation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Why then do we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to punish us.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the punishment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us death before he decides to punish everyone wholesale. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the tests and calamities to come near Qiyamah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he mentions whosoever wants the dunya, we will grant him from the dunya. Whosoever wants that which is now, meaning that which is in front of us immediate, meaning the dunya, Allah says we will grant them the dunya. May Allah save us. He says for such a person, they have chosen the dunya. So Allah says then after that we have prepared Jahannam for them. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this dunya and the best of the akhirah. We are fortunate to be from amongst the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are taught that we are allowed to live in this dunya and make use of what is in the dunya on condition that we do not forget the core that we are here for. And we do not overlook the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of parents. He says, Indeed Allah has declared that you shall worship none besides Him. And do good to your parents. This command would have not been here if everyone were doing good to their parents. But it shows us that indeed we lack. And at times we give preference to those who come up later, such as our wives and our own children. We give preference to them over our parents. How many of us have visited our parents in the last few months? How many of us have literally sat with our parents and spent 10 minutes just asking them how they are? If we live far from them, how many of us have just made a phone call to their mother to say, my dear mother, I have been missing you. How are you? How is your health? This in itself, Wallahi is an ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us obedient children. And in the case where someone has, someone's parents have passed away, how many of us have made dua for them? How many of us have read something and passed the thawab onto them or done a good act on their behalf? We all know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a child makes dua for the deceased parent, that dua indeed gets to that parent. If a good deed is done for the isal, isal al-thawab as we would call it, or for the reward of that deceased parent, indeed the reward goes there. Let us engage in this. Not only our fathers, but even our grandfathers and great-grandfathers, they are all regarded as our parents. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Indeed, those who are wasteful are the, brother, are the brothers of shaitan. To waste is prohibited in the sharia. If we are to spend, we are to spend wisely, but we are not to waste. It does not mean that I can afford to buy the latest car, but I shouldn't because it is a waste. That is not a waste. A waste is when you have more than one of what you only need one of. That is now a waste. But to buy the best quality and one, that is not the waste if you, if a waste if you can afford it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding of what is wastage and what is not wastage. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions again the evil of zina and immorality. Don't even come close to zina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this ill and evil that is spreading in society like wildfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention that when you make a promise, you should fulfill it. For indeed, the promises will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. At times, we are Muslims. We are supposed to be the ones who fulfill our promises first. We are supposed to be the ones who are the strictest when it comes to fulfilling the promises. But we find that we are the ones who are lacking. When it comes to fulfilling promises, you ask someone who has promised you and broken their promise, they will say this Muslim brother or this Muslim sister. And now the Billah, when it comes to the Kuffar, nowadays the tables have turned, we find that they are fulfilling their promises. Where are we heading? We have the Quran, we have the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we are choosing not to follow this Quran, not to follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What then do we expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا Speaking of all the promises, even the promise we have made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfill the promises. For indeed, you will be questioned 
question regarding your promises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, وَلَا تَقُفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Do not utter that which you do not have knowledge about. At times, we tend to utter things, we tend to say things as though we have knowledge and we don't have knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us knowledge that will benefit us and may He benefit us from the knowledge that we may have achieved. And at times, we spread rumor we are used as a vehicle to spread rumor because we do not clarify and verify before we believe such rumor. This too is spreading ignorance and speaking and uttering that which we do not have sound knowledge about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from rumors. May He save us from listening to them, from believing them and from spreading them. Amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, watch how you walk on earth. Do not walk arrogantly, do not walk with pride. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا when you walk on the earth, do not walk with arrogance and pride. What do you want to achieve? You might die the next step. And what did you achieve with that pride and arrogance? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not resurrect us with Haman and Qarun. May he resurrect us with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali radiallahu anhum jami'a. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention the fact that all creation engages in the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing that exists engages in the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you do not understand the tasbih. My dear brothers, dear listeners, listen to the birds in the morning. What do you think they are chirping about? It is the time of Fajr that they start. Unfortunately, we are snoring at the time of Fajr. And here we have the birds, Allahu Akbar. Listen to them chirping. Not only are they waking us up from, or for our salah, from our sleep, but they are also engaged before us. In the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have only given you the example of the bird. However, every single creature Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this verse, that every single creature engages in the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why then, man who has the greatest brain of all is found not to be engaged in tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us ask ourselves, when last have we picked up a tasbih for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and completed it, whether it is 100 beads more or less, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when last have we done it? And yet we claim to be the intellectuals. We claim to be those who have brains. We, can, we claim to be those who are more advanced than the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why in another verse, a few ajza before this one, we read a verse which said that at times man is like animal and cattle and even worse and I remember explaining why that is the case then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us how we should speak let my worshippers know that they should say that which is the best when you are speaking think before you talk don't just blabber and utter anything and you don't know what the next man will feel, what the next person will feel. Even if you are right, there is a method of speaking. We should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us a brain and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tongue. This tongue is to be used with that brain, in connection with that brain. If we use the tongue without the brain, what is the difference between us and animals? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding of how to speak when we want to come across to someone no matter what we want to say. Whether we would like to reprimand our own children or someone close to us or someone who is at a distance. We should know that there is a method of doing it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us a brain to understand these methods. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in this Qur'an there is cure. We have revealed in this Qur'an that in which there is shifa and mercy for the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers, dear listeners, at times people ask, they ask, Mawlana, you know, what is the verse for this illness? What is the verse for that illness? Let me tell you, there are verses that are hidden in the Quran that are for illnesses that you may not know you are suffering. Read the Quran from cover to cover and finish the khatam of the Quran as soon as you can, not only in the month of Ramadan, even outside the month of Ramadan, because wallahi, there are verses in the Quran that you may not know. They will cure certain maladies of yours, whether physical or spiritual or otherwise, that you may not even know you are suffering. This is the the power of the Quran. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this Quran has granted us shifa. And listen, the Quran can be read in so many different ways. Pick up someone whom you like their recitation. Listen to it, whether you are playing a cassette or a CD, whatever you have. But there are so many tunes that the Quran is recited in. Every single one of us has a different mizaj. We have different tastes but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the Quran in such a way that when different people recite it it affects different people different melodies affect different people pick up the one that suits you the most and listen to the Quran cover to cover Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you cure and he grant me cure Amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is daring all mankind and jinn kind. He is saying, come together, even if all of you come together and you try to make even verses of the Quran or come with something similar to the Quran, you will never manage. Say, if mankind and jinn kind were to come together, to produce something similar to this Quran, they will never come with something similar to this Quran. Can there be shifa in that which someone is trying to produce and claiming that it is similar to the Quran? In fact, the blood will boil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may He protect our offspring after us. May He also keep our offspring on Iman and make them strong mu'mineen. Amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that I have shown so many signs in this Quran to man, but man is always on the track of disbelief. Allah is saying, I have explained to man in this Quran so many examples. But man has refused. Most of mankind have refused except to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He not make us from amongst them. Ya Allah, we are the ones who have heard the Quran and we believe in it. We have heard the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we believe in it. Ya Allah, grant us to be from amongst the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the akhirah. In the dunya, Ya Allah, you have chosen others to be the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But have mercy on us, Ya Allah, and grant us the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the akhirah at least. Amin. Then in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that whenever you are going to say, whenever you want to do something in the future, don't say, I will do it without saying, Insha'Allah. Don't say that you are going to do something tomorrow or in the future. Except that you say, Insha'Allah, with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding that it is only if Allah wills that anything that is going to happen will happen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains a very interesting point. And this point is for us to understand the miracle of the Quran. He mentions the story of the people in the cave. And he says, They lived in the cave for 300 years. And added to that an extra nine. Now, there is a mufassir of our time. He has mentioned a very interesting point. He says, look, if you were to take 300 years in the calendar of the Jews and the Christians, meaning the solar calendar, and you were to convert it into the Islamic lunar calendar, they would be exactly an excess of nine years. Subhanallah. So Allah says, 300 years. Why? Now it conforms to that which is in the Old Testament. To that, the stories which were with the Jews and the Christians. And Allah is adding it for us. Muhammad Rasulullah. Pick up your calculators when you go home. Work out 300 solar years. You will get exactly 309 lunar years subhanallah look at how powerful the quran is if only we looked into it and we understood then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those who believe and they do good deeds we are not going to waste their good deeds anyone who has done any good deed we are not going to waste it listen to the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you do a bad deed and you seek forgiveness allah wipes it out but your good continues to increase so if i started at the age of 12 for example doing good and may allah forbid but if i have also done bad 
whenever I have sought forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bad came down to the zero level. But the good keep kept on increasing and increasing and increasing. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, when it comes to forgiveness, I will forgive. When it comes to giving good, I will never delete your good deeds. In fact, there is a verse that we will come to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that at times, if the tawbah is done sincerely, I will convert that evil into good on the scale of goodness. So on the day of Qiyamah, we will come and we will see the scales. We will notice so many good deeds on our good scale and we will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have not done these deeds. And he will say, it is my mercy. When you repented regarding the bad deed that you committed, I converted it into a good deed and I put it onto the other side of the scale. Can anyone be more merciful than Allah? Why then do we see ourselves losing hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let us never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention about the day of Qiyamah, the fact that the people will be in lines, in rows, and the mujrimin, the criminals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will mention, الكتاب, when they see their books in front of them clearly. What is it with this book? It has not left a single small item, nor a big item. Except that it has circumscribed all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us and he is warning the criminals. Who is a criminal? A criminal is a person who never repents. He never turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala though he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can forgive him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst the criminals. Ya Allah, we seek your forgiveness here and now. Ya Allah, forgive us on this night. Forgive all of us, Ya Allah, and grant us Jannah without hisab, without kitab. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا Can they be someone who is more oppressive than the one who is reminded of the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still turns away from them? Right now I have spoken about the forgiveness of Allah. If it has not touched our hearts, there is something wrong with our hearts. Because it means the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being recited in front of us. We are being reminded of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we feel we don't need it. Na'udhu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst those. Allah says, can there be someone more oppressive than such a person whom the verses are recited to him? He is reminded and still we find that he is turning away. May Allah save our progeny as well after us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam, wherein one day Musa alayhi salam said that in one gathering, someone asked him who was most knowledgeable. And naturally he thought he was the Nabi. He was a Nabi. He said, I am the most knowledgeable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him that, look, we have granted someone knowledge that you do not have. So Musa alayhi salam was anxious to know who this person was. And Musa alayhi salatu was salam was told to do something. Insha'Allah, what he was told to do, we will hear tomorrow. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.